so I have a story time for you guys today. I do not do these very often, but I figured I have a couple things that I found semi-interesting in my life, and so I figured I might as well share them with you guys. So as a lot of you probably already know, my husband and I lived in Portland for a year. We've been back in Washington State for about three or four months now, and on our second to last day there, literally the evening before we moved back to Washington. We decided to go get some dinner with a bunch of the co-workers that Andrew was friends with while he was in Portland, which is why we moved there in the first place was for his job. So we were all eating outside because it was a really nice day. It was the end of May, so it was like 75 degrees, when all of a sudden this really big dog, definitely part husky, it had the very husky tail, comes up to our table, basically says hi, and then walks into the restaurant that we're sitting outside of. Someone had opened the door to leave and in that brief moment before the door swung shut, the dog zoomed right in. Of course, the dog wasn't allowed to be in the restaurant and so an employee like shoes the dog back outside. We notice that there's no one looking around for the dog so we all kind of like stop the dog, someone's holding onto its collar, we're petting him. A couple of the people in our group walk around to see if there is anyone else who looks like they're looking for someone, aka the dog. Those people are gone for maybe 15 minutes and they don't find anybody. Luckily, one of Andrew's friends had this like emergency bracelet that you can kind of unwrap into this really long piece of cord. And so he unwrapped it and we made a little makeshift leash for the dog. This dog had a collar, but he didn't have any tags or anything on there. And so we're like, okay, well we can't phone anybody to see if it's their dog. So we sit there for a little while and we try to decide what to do next. Andrew and I were the only ones who had driven to this restaurant because everyone else took the bus. And so we volunteer to take the dog to an animal hospital that's across town to see if he has a chip that we can get read and see if we can find the owners that way. This whole process so far has taken probably 45 minutes and we still, again, have not found any owners. So we hop into the car and a couple other people come with us and they all pile in. We have the dog in the back and they're petting him to make sure he stays calm. And we drive over to the animal hospital. And this was like, like seven o'clock at night or so and so almost everywhere was closed so we had to go to the one across town. So we get to the animal hospital and we take him inside and it takes a while before they can finally have someone scan to see if he has a chip and it turns out of course he doesn't. I of course this whole time was getting attached to this dog because I love dogs and I'm a sucker for them so I'm like Andrew if we can't find the owners we're keeping this dog right? And you're just like no I don't want a big dog but I'm convinced that we're gonna keep it if nothing else happens. We talked to the like secretary or whoever is working at the front desk of the animal hospital and discussing the options of what to do next. It is an animal hospital, not like a hotel or anything like that. And so they don't want to keep him overnight because they want to, you know, leave the cages open for dogs or cats that are sick or injured and they don't want to take up space with a perfectly healthy animal. And again, because it is evening, we can't take it to a shelter for them to watch the dog for us. The next one didn't open until like nine the next morning, and of course, that was our moving day. We say that, okay, we will take the dog home until the next morning, and Andrew will just wake up early and drop the dog off at the hospital while I stay and help the movers get everything into the moving truck. So we get home, it's probably nine o'clock in the evening now, and Andrew puts an ad on Craigslist. He doesn't include a picture or anything. He just says that we found a dog in downtown Portland and that if anybody was missing their dog to call us and let us know what the dog looks like and what the collar color was and everything so we could return the dog to them. So of course we had a 450 square foot studio apartment, tiny. And we were living out of boxes, again, day before we moved. So there was boxes everywhere. It was a mess. And then all of a sudden we had this like huge dog in our midst. At this point, it was difficult, but you know, we're up to it. We like dogs, so we didn't mind having him overnight. Darcy, however, was not so happy. Darcy is 25 pounds. He doesn't love big dogs. And of course, the dog that we had found was really chill and easygoing. He didn't bark, I don't even think, once the whole time that we were watching him. But Darcy was not having it. He was terrified of this other dog. The entire time, Darcy was hiding under our bed. We tried to, you know, get them to play together. Darcy wasn't having it. This other dog, he really wanted to play. He was like trying to wiggle under the bed as well, but he couldn't fit and Darcy was freaking out about it. So Andrew got a few responses to his Craigslist ad. 
one was looking for like a bulldog, one was looking for a girl dog, and then we finally get an email from a couple who is looking for a dog that's part husky. I'm like, okay, and that makes sense. They're like, okay, it's a boy. I'm like, all right, we're following. It has a blue collar. This dog has a blue collar. And we're like, okay, this all sounds legit. I think we have your dog. But can you send us a picture of your dog just to be sure? So they send us a picture and it's the dog. We found the owners. So they show up and we bring the dog downstairs and outside of our building and the people get out of the car and this dog freaks out, freaks out. He starts like whining and pulling at the leash really hard and he like sprints over to his owners and like almost tackles them and he's huge, he can drag me along so I like almost fall over. I'm really glad that it all worked out. The owners gave us big hugs, they were so relieved. It turns out that they had gone to dinner in downtown Portland and being that it was, you know, a warm day but not super hot, they figured they could leave their dog in the car for a little bit. They didn't leave their windows open but they left their sunroof open. Do you see where I'm going with this? They didn't think that their dog would jump out of the sunroof. No, he jumped out of the sunroof and started wandering around downtown Portland. And the reason that he didn't have the tags was because it had fallen off the day before, it like broken the day before. Like the pictures that they had sent us from, I don't know, a week or two before had the tag on the collar. Overall, it had a happy ending and although I was very heartbroken to let this dog go, um, I'm really glad that we found the owners and he was able to get back to his home. I hope you guys enjoyed this story time. I thought it was interesting and a fun story and it had a happy ending, which is always good. So um, that's gonna be it for me today and I'll see you next time. Bye.